I give rabbits four out of ten. That's generous. Were you surprised that photo mode in Horizon was as good as it is? Yeah, because it, it gives yeah it gives you a lot of um, a lot of wiggle. But room. you know you know quite a lot about photography, don't you? In any way, and it it seems to do quite a good job of replicating traditional photographic techniques within the game that, that, you, that you can use. I mean, it's got all the tools there for you to do it. Yeah, it's like the principles are still the same, but it gives you the. Um, <clears throat> You just have to imagine you're using a more automated mode. So let's just say like you stick your camera on auto and it's like you're sticking your camera on auto. So the game's already got everything set as it needs to be. So it's already taking care of things like there's no such things as shutter speeds and um, and and like your ISO levels or anything. So all, all you're doing is it's, it's letting you play around with, with the depth of field. So it's, it's like a really nice way of being able to take a particular aspect of photography and, and one which I think people really enjoy talking about and um, just applying that to the game. And that's why when, when I with a, when I was doing a walkthrough video, it was, let's talk about what the depth of field is and how do we achieve these nice creamy backgrounds and stuff so there's there's something there to it i'll definitely go back to it how do you think it compares to photo mode in other games because i think um, something like drive club i think has got very good photo mode but then car games typically look very good anyway so if you're spinning the camera around and everything like that it's going to look good uh that's hard to say because i'm not sure that i have I'm I'm tr I'm struggling to think of games that I might have played with photo modes. I, I'm sure there are some, and I'm just I'm, they're just not coming to mind. So, did you do any Last of Us photo mode? Because that that's quite good. Oh no, I, I didn't. Funnily enough, I, I think I was just too much into the into the main story. I I, I don't think I did play around with that. There, there are there are some very good photo opportunities in that, and, and again, you've got similar things of lighting, depth of field, filters, and all that sort of stuff. Which are, which are decent. Um, I think obviously it helps if the game looks good as well. Yeah. But even though um, like Smash Brothers on the Wii U has got a photo mode. All right. You Obviously, it's, it's fixed across the 2D plane, and you can spin it around a little bit. Um, I can't remember if you can save the photos or what, what you do with them. With, you know, I, think, I think you can get them off the system, like you can on um, the PlayStation and the Xbox modes. Yeah, but see, the the Switch has a photo mode on it as well. But I find that you so if you go into Zelda, and I'm, I did Zelda do it on the Wii as well. I'm not sure we did on the on the on the Wii, but but basically you've got the little switch, uh, the little button on the Switch, and you push that to go to take your photographs. But Zelda also has the yeah, you can take selfies and but there's really not a great deal of control you have over it that, that I can recall. Um, yeah. But. Even I think Horizon has, it's not perfect, but it's it's only limited by it, it, it's limited by just the natural obstacles in the game. So if you were halfway up a hill or something when you're trying to take a a nice photo, or you uh, you're you're controlling the the crane mode, it has a crane mode, so you go up and down and and uh, that can be fiddly if you're not on like a like on a flat surface because there's only so far down the camera will move around so you have to really fiddle around with it but so you know what i mean it doesn't sink into the rocks it, it won't kind of compromise it will i, the, I think the other issue is it I, I wish you could explore more of the your surroundings sometimes you get like a shot and you have it in your head and you'll spin the camera around and you'll think, okay, this is what I want. And and it's just out of reach because the camera won't push too far out of the, there's like a certain box around your character. And I'm trying to recall, like, it would have been nice if it could have been more like, you know, like the Halo Forge levels or something where you can just go around like as much as you want and really extend that camera as far out as you need to. 
that was pretty amazing that one like, I mean, you could pretty much do anything you wanted in, in there yeah and I don't understand I don't see why they couldn't have done that in Horizon I think that because it's all there it's all been everything's rendered and modeled and there's no there's no barriers there it's it's entirely open world so a, a little more freedom there i would have liked but yeah, yeah i really i really like um, because it, it's as you were saying mark we were doing the when we were trying to do a little video before about it you kind of didn't know much about it and then you were t telling me <laughs> All you're doing is taking photographs now. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't really been using the photo mode. So I just don't, I just don't bother um, generally. Uh, so yeah. So once you and she showed me like stuff like that, I was, I've been taking those photos now. I, I took a load in the in Zelda as well, actually, but I couldn't because it's just a button. But mm. I couldn't get them off because you need like a Twitter. I don't know if they changed it now, but you had to have a Twitter or something else account, which I don't have and don't want. So as loading the screens go, ten out of ten. Cool. I don't, I don't know. I, it's well exclusive there. First review. I'm, I'm on the fence about it, to be honest. First review, um, very white uh, instead of blue, like the last one was. Um, nice music. Uh, yeah, I mean, it does what it says on the tin. It's a holding, holding screen for the game. I'll buy it. Splatoon came out. Was it last night it launched? Just the the first part of that spat. The, that's um... that's just like a demo for us on for the for the this they had this like spat fest thing that they do. They just had like um so we could, anyone could play it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I I tried I I want to like the game because I like the I like the visual presentation and I like the music. It's really catchy and it's it's quirky, but I I couldn't see a way of switching off the tilt controls and and I think I, I, I there there is I, there is a way there is a way to switch tilt controls off. I, it was it was it was unfortunate because I tried to join you and a friend in, in a game yesterday and it and it wasn't having it, and the. Uh, well, it's because we didn't have four players. We need, uh, you needed four to do it. Uh, well, so that's... can you only only play it if there's four of you? Yeah. So the, well, the original they didn't have that option at all. So they've improved it by uh you know by adding a team option, but it looks like you have to have four for that for that demo thing anyway. I don't know if that'll be different for the release. Um, just if you want to play with friends, I mean, we we had there were three of us and we just couldn't get another random to join us in the room, uh, so we kind of went our own ways. And I spent, admittedly, I only spent about ten minutes on it, but I just couldn't. I, I wasn't patient enough to stick with the tilt controls. I just, it, I just do not like it at all. I, I'm, I, I can appreciate that there's probably some sort of innovation there, but. Jumping into that for the first time because I, I didn't I didn't have a Wii and I, I didn't play the original. It's it's maybe better to like if you bought it. It sounds like you're definitely not going to. But um, the the single player would obviously introduce that to you without going, it's going straight into a multiplayer game without knowing anything about it is a bit off the point. I think. I don't know. I, I th it had a tutorial and I I just it was annoying. yeah, but it's it very, very short, isn't it? It it is. It is but. I don't know. If I don't want to use it, then I, I just feel like I should be able to just not use it. Uh, because there are other games that employ stuff like that. and You, you can't turn it off. I, I looked through the menu. I tried. I, I'm not sure it was the most intuitive thing. And no, no it's, no, it's not most intuitive. But you can definitely turn turn off the motion controls. Because I felt even the lobby system wasn't that intuitive. You just you go in the lobby, and then it's just you're, you're, you're assaulted with this just neon colors in this built up community and there's no real directions of where to go and i yeah i just i did yeah. not like it i i i yeah, i'd assume the main game would introduce you know introduce that better just yeah but yeah i agree it was it's not very well done. i, I want to be more positive about about to do because it's amazing um it's just so much fun just the colors the you don't you don't even have to be any good at it to have fun and do do well there's you, you just run around painting stuff um and yeah, it's just, it controls really well. It's just it's so good. It's, yeah, it's a shame we didn't get on with it. I, I think there's a problem though with the the, the non tilt controls. It, it, I don't know if it's going to be the same in this one, but I think it was in the previous demo that the, the normal controls are just bad. Because the tilt controls are good, but it does take time to get used to them. And then people say, "Oh, I don't like that. I'm going to go to these normal controls." But they might not like it anyway because the controls are just 
don't work very well the normal controls the the sensitivity is far too high for up and down movements you end well, up just looking all the, over the place the, where's the difficulty in in just providing sliders to adjust that yeah yeah because yeah i just yeah, don't i can't same. get my head around that but yeah. it's i'm sure you're right it's not it's not that i'm gonna write the game off i i'm, I'm still very much interested in checking it out but uh it's just it's it's released at a certain time along with arms two games that i'm just not quite feeling enough that i would yeah. put that much time into them i'm not saying you should get it if you don't like it you don't like it that's cool i just i think it's really good <laughs> well no that's the thing i kind of i kind of like it and hate it at the same time and i'm and i'm only hating on the bit that i want to change and you pop you possibly can change but um i i cut it short i just said no i'm i'm not dealing with that and uh I, I would say stay tuned. I may look at it again another another time. More importantly, who won out of cake and ice cream? Oh, it's ridiculous. It's, we've been cheated. Uh, ice cream won, apparently. Told you ice cream is better. No. I'm confused by all of that. It, 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 that's the Splatfest thing. They do very like uh, like weekend events where you pick a team and it's like something versus something. So this one was cake versus ice cream. Um. Oh, so like they can they change it like weekly, so it'd be yeah. I don't know if it's every week, but yeah. Sonic and versus Mario. Pick a team, and then you just play, and whoever wins the most games or whatever uh, out of people. Uh, okay, because I did go in, and when I was I, when I was going through the lobby, there were uh, there were people with uh, signs, or like some of them were like really crude signs that just said Team Cake, and some had like these really elaborately drawn, cool anime-looking signs. And I thought, did they do that themselves? Or yes, is it yes like... they, yeah, they did that themselves. That's on, very cool. On the, I don't know how it works on this, but on the Wii, Wii U, they had a Miiverse thing where you can draw, you know, like you can send people sit pictures. Because you can draw on the tablet screen, you could draw pictures. And they had that integration into Splatoon where it had come up with pictures people had drawn and stuff. So it's the same thing, but I don't know how they've implemented it on the Switch. Yeah, because because there shouldn't be no reason why. I would imagine if you've got a stylus, you can just draw straight onto the switch screen. But I, I didn't. Again, I didn't see an option. If you'd need a yeah, you'd need a capacitive stylus. But yeah. But that's a, that's there were some really just cool posters there because you I came on and you said join Team Cake, so yeah. I come on and I go in the lobby and all I'm seeing is a bunch of guy you know, guy and girl avatars there with signs saying Team Cake on them. I'm like, well, well, who do I walk up to? And then that's where we got the confusion of, well, no, you need to go into this room and then you have to join. It. And it doesn't hold your hand. It doesn't spell any of this. I'd, I'd, no, I'd imagine the full game will. It's just, it's just a demo. Uh... It has been a big thing for a couple of years because you, you, you've only got to look at a lot of the titles that are on the. The, the marketplaces, whether it's Xbox or PlayStation. And I go on the PlayStation store and, and it just seems like an endless list of, I say retro in a way that it's not meant to, it's not meant to sound, I guess it's like a safe word. You see something that uses pixel art, whether it's 8-bit or 16-bit and you just think oh, that, that's retro. But there are a lot of games that are doing really good things and, and are creating their own interesting mechanics, but they're just utilizing these obviously inspired engines and uh, you, know, you have titles like shovel knight and there's there's reasons why those are so um revered and yeah i play games like the, like a recent example of, of a really good one inspired by the old pixel art games would be um again um flint hook um because it's 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 approachable and but it's also tough as nails as well and it just goes back to to the old Mega Man games in terms of <laughs> how difficult it is and I, every time whenever I just see something like that it, it always just it just continues to draw me in so I'm I'm I, that's always just been like a part of it's always been an interest to me just growing up and seeing that despite how technically advanced these games have become there's there's still there's still a place for these styles of games and I suppose that takes us into games like ukulele which take that a little bit further because here we're looking at the the snares menu and we're looking at rare classics like Donkey Kong Country and rare of course did Banjo Kazooie but obviously that's with Microsoft now we're not going to see it but when we see games like ukulele that also took us back to our childhoods as well. And, and I know, Matt, you're the one that's really been 
mucking about with ukulele and, and yeah so i played um quite a bit of ukulele and i think so, so i remember those games and i remember really enjoying them so banjo one two and donkey oh, was it donkey kong yeah donkey donkey kong 64. 64 yeah oh you must have <coughs> 64 yeah and it's kind of it was it's builders I mean, it's the team that did banjo and, it, and it's built as a you know another sort of 90s sort of inspired collect them up um which, which it very much is and i was like oh yeah that sounds great and i think everybody felt the same you know did a did a real real good job on kickstarter loads of interest then it came out and it's a bit like oh okay yeah i remember playing these sorts of games this feels so similar that i'm not sure i really want to play it that much it's like got loads of camera problems which has had a number of patches and i still think it's a bit not great um the voices in it are annoying um, i mean they've used all the same text from banjo and i, and I get that's probably deliberate it just feels a bit weird really and i think i think it's probably that it's so close because they did do a third banjo game which was banjo nuts and bolts I don't that's, know if you guys... that's completely different to the ones on it you like built your own vehicles or something and that's exactly what i mean they kind of took that format and it was a little bit of the 3d platformer in there as well but actually it was more about the building piece so you'd, you'd collect bits and build your own vehicles and that was really good and this is going back to sort of the original ones where you've got hub world actually got two kind of linked hub worlds which is a bit weird and then you've got um different worlds that you go into within that and there's bits to collect and pages and there's characters and little challenges you do all of those and it yeah it, it i thought i really wanted another 3d platformer like that after playing ukulele i'm not sure i do or perhaps i do and i want something different i don't know and it's weird because mario odyssey is coming out and again 3d platformer but the mario ones have done stuff a little bit different like sunshine had the um the ink and the water spraying mechanics and it added something a bit different to it uh, Odyssey's obviously doing something again. Galaxy was a little bit different. You had the Wiimote controls to change it up a little bit. They seem like they're just tweaking it enough to keep people interested. Plus, I suppose you've got the Nintendo level of polish on it, which perhaps some of the others don't have. Maybe that's what Ukulele's missing, because you know it's very, very similar to those Nintendo games. But that's the thing with Nintendo, because they're always about evolving and just trying to push push things as far as they can and the the thing with the Nintendo is that they they don't need to they don't need to market themselves in a way that in the way that that ukulele did if you know what i mean because i'm assuming that you approached ukulele as a fan of banjo kazooie and when they put ukulele on kickstarter it was all about that it was all about the nostalgia and it was seemed to be a game that was designed to connect with people who grew up with similar style games 20 years ago but i'm really curious what about the new audiences though i'm i'm wondering how because most of the criticisms i've had are from people who just say well it's it's tired now now it feels boring and it just it just feels needless but what about somebody who hasn't I mean, let's not forget we're not all our age there's gonna there's a generation now of kids growing up who's never heard of Nintendo before, or maybe not, none of these consoles that we're talking about now, and they're playing ukulele and they may never have seen Banjo-Kazooie before, is this a game that they're going to respond really well to? Because they don't have those, those you know, rose-tinted, you know, glasses on. It's really hard to say, I think, and, and some of it's probably down to the characters as well. Because, but Banjo, oh, I can't remember if Banjo was post Diddy Kong Racing. I think it probably was. It introduced all of these types of characters, and then Banjo and Kazooie had their own spin-off, uh, and and then Conker kind of did the same thing. But they they recognised that you can't just do a Banjo game, but with Conker in it, he needs his own personality and everything like that. Yeah. And, and they're all they're all essentially you know animals with big eyes. <laughs> Rare were, but, but, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Rare were really good at kind of forging these characters and and to be fair with them when they move with microsoft they, they've still done good work and and the the viva pinata games they, they've still got some like really adorable creations that kind of convey a lot without having you know without having to say much if, if you know what i mean it's, they were very good at doing um 
working with things like the the body language and just very the, the noises and I, I suppose with ukulele they've done something very similar it's it's the but it, it it's it sounds like it's not so much endearing as it is just really really annoying yeah it didn't didn't quite do it for me really um, i don't know there's definitely i'm sure a market for those sorts of games and clearly people are very um excited and passionate about them but i'm not quite sure where we can't go back to exactly the way they were we need to try something a little bit different yeah it it makes it it brings me up it, it makes um sorry i'll start that again it, it brings to mind the conversation we had not too long ago about gaming in the 90s and how a, a lot of the 2d platformers and then onto the 3d platforms they they seem to be defined a lot by their the attitude of the time and the 90s was all about being very it was all about being cool and having a you know having the attitude and and so we had this onslaught of um mascot characters that were i suppose trying to emulate the success of of games like um Sonic the Hedgehog and and, uh, and the Mario games and the the offshoot characters from that, which became household names, and we had a slew of these other imitators, which kind of lost sight of what made those games so good, and we just ended up with, you know, characters that, although games like Crash Bandicoot may be, well, uh, highly regarded. Crash Bandicoot himself, I find, is quite an annoying character. And if you start going further and further back at um, all these desperate attempts at trying to create studio mascots, not not many of them really lasted and, and endured. If you think about it, yeah, I, I think it's there's quite a few, and Sony tried it quite late as well um, with Sackboy and Little Big Planet. Yeah, uh, and, and he is really a Sony mascot, but other than the first one. Didn't really have any big games behind him to support it. I know there's been a little big one in two and three, but they're not they're not as good as the original. Um, so, so creating a new character is quite hard, actually. When you talk to a character, they go. <laughs> that sounds fairly annoying. Fair. <laughs> well, well done, uh, ukulele, for ruining modern gaming. Yeah, it is just a bit irritating, really. It's almost as annoying as my cat. I played um, this game recently called Unbox Newbie's Adventure. Okay. Um, so we were talking about 90s platformers, and it is very much that. Um, but it's weird. You play a cardboard box, and you can put, like, a hat on it and some eyes. Uh, <laughs> and you, you sort of you have to help save the postal service by delivering <laughs> yourself. <laughs> and, and Lord knows it needs saving. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not Royal Mail, unfortunately. We're a little bit way away from sentient boxes. <laughs> but maybe, maybe Amazon are close. I don't know. <laughs> By the sounds of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's so it's a bit weird. So I'm playing a game. Like you play you know, banjo, and he runs around like go <laughs> um, Conquer <laughs> runs around swearing and drinking, and uh, you're a cardboard box. And all I can think of is, well, oh, best not get wet. Oh. Do they throw those obstacles at you? Well, the training ground for the sentient boxes is a <laughs> series a series of islands. And you're the newbie to the postal service, called newbie. Uh, and as part of your training, you need to do stuff. Uh, and you're in a load of islands. It just feels a bit harsh. Like, can you imagine starting your new job? And they go, right, we're going to train you in your job. And around you is loads of like lava pits and fire. We know that humans don't do well with that. <laughs> so if you get it wrong, you're dead. Um, so don't get it wrong. I mean, it's, I don't know. I just don't feel like that's a really positive training environment for a cardboard box. You know, an island out in the sun. Well, the sun probably doesn't make much difference. But again, you're outdoors if it rains, you're stuffed. So I, I, wouldn't, the... I wouldn't blame him if he rang up his agency and said, find me somewhere else. But this is what is also weird about the game. I mean, firstly, you're a cardboard box. So anytime you want to do any sort of turning, you've got an issue on your hands because I don't know if you ever tried rolling a cube across the floor. 
doesn't exactly go where you want it to go. Um, so it's not like it's a ball or anything. But you can drive cars and forklift trucks and stuff as well. As a they, box? Yeah, as a box, yeah. So okay. not only have you not got opposable thumbs, you've not got actual arms or legs. So how you're controlling it, I don't know. Um, but it just seems weird that you'd go to all the effort of creating sentient parcels that can deliver themselves, but not adding in sentient forklift trucks and cars. Who's driving those? Are the boxes? I, I don't know. I don't want to get too hung up on the you plot. You raised but... too many questions, Matt. Was, was I'm not sure the developers are equipped to answer them. It just doesn't feel like they thought it through. I had this when I was a kid, yeah. So, and like Super Mario Kart is amazing. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I was there as a kid with it. With SNES. But I like when you're a kid, you can't really form any games. So I only had like four games or something. I, I used to rent them from video shop stuff like that. So I read stuff like F Zero, Secret of Mana, Unirally. I, I rented those, never owned them. So yeah. yeah. I, I remember, I remember, because I, I, I went from, the SNES was the first console I owned, so I, I never actually, I never had a, the original NES. I went from the Sega Mega Drive to, to the SNES, I think that was a couple of years later. And, but then again, the, the NES didn't really have much of an impact in the UK that I recall. I, I, none of my friends, I, I remember having that. Um, which is just, isn't to say that I, I wouldn't like one. I, I'd still like to try and get my hands on one of those old uh, NES minis. But I think the SNES was the one that really had an impact with, with most of my friends and, and my childhood. So like yourself, I would I would have like a handful of games. When, when that came out originally, I would I would... I clearly remember having Super Mario World as being like the first title release. And then there was, I remember picking up Super Tennis. I think there was Super Soccer as well. And and then, of course, you had, um, I was there when, you know, for Donkey Kong and and, uh, and Star Fox. So it, it's one of those things where when you're a kid, you, you don't think about, you, you don't kind of have that attachment that you would looking back on it 20 years later. So I would look at videos now on YouTube about collecting for Nintendo and Sega and, and really regret getting rid of of my old consoles. But, but then I, I started to realize that the more I was watching these videos, they all kind of had very similar things in common where we were all in the same position. And when you're a kid, you want the next console, you want the next game. And to do that, you would you, you can't always rely on your parents. So you would go and trade and you would when the next console came out, you would sell your current one. And that's just how it went. It was just the process of evolution. And some people, if you if you could afford to and you wanted to collect them, you would. But you some of us had to take different means. And then and now we find ourselves kind of wishing that we had those consoles still and we when we hung on to them. And I, I think with the SNES, I, I immediately jumped on it. I ordered I pre-ordered it from um, the Nintendo store. And that's about the best thing you can do. I mean, you sign up for the mailing lists and then just immediately when you get notified um matt did you did you go for this one yourself i was i was thinking about it uh, I, I just couldn't decide really i was going to then i wasn't and by the time i realized that they were out and up for pre-order um they'd all been gone <laughs> so it was the decision was kind of made up for me really um but the thing is it'd be quite nice in some ways because i would never played original mario kart uh, I don't think I've ever oh, played wow. original F Zero. Um, even the Mario games on the SNES, I've not played, although I've since played Mario games. Yeah, um, so it would, would be nice to play them, but uh, I know you can. There are other ways around that these days, but you sort of still, it would it'd be nice just to get the Nintendo controllers, the Nintendo little unit, plug it in. Um, and it's a nice little display piece. It, it looks really, it looks really adorable, really. And I do like that they've thrown in two controllers. Which they didn't do with the NES. Um, did you? Do you actually have? I mean, can you recall? Did you have a SNES when you were younger, or? No, no, I had a Mega Drive. I was a Mega Drive. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I was playing Sonic and Streets of Rage and uh, all of those other games in, in instead, really. Would, um, uh, sorry, I was say, would you get a? There are Mega Drive versions. Would you be interested in a Mega Drive version of a similar thing? Would there are are available? I believe. No, so we did, we did have one of those one Christmas, like not that long ago, where you it was like the controller, and you plugged it directly into the TV, and I think it had Sensible Soccer, 
um, cannon fodder and something else. Um, and it was just a bit rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, it was nice, but it was nice for a few minutes, really. And I think that's probably what, what puts me off really getting like the SNES Mini or something like that, aside from mostly not being available, is that I'd play it for a few minutes and go, oh, yeah, this is okay. Kind of got the gist of it. Move on. I know, I know there's more to it than that, but uh, for a lot of those types of games, I don't know, maybe it'd be different with the SNES where they're games that I've never played before. But certainly with cannon fodder and that sort of thing, it's like, well, I've played loads of that previously. Um, with Jaws and Jops, you try and get them to survive as long as you can. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so, I, I don't know, 80 quid, 80 quid saved, I think. Probably <laughs> the best. Having, so having said that, if it was available now, would I, would I buy one? Probably because I'm weak. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, the, the, the most of the lineup. Now, this does have less games than the NES. I think when the NES Mini came out last year, there was like 30 games. This is going to be preloaded with 21. And there are a good handful of these that, that I don't know. But I, I do have the list in front of me. And, and overall, it's it's a really cracking cracking list of games. So you've, you, you've got Contra 3, the Alien Wars. Now, that was Probotector. That was released as Super Probotector on, this, on the SNES in the UK. And I distinctly remember it because the, they replaced the... Um, the main avatars with with like, like cyborgs they were uh, i forget why exactly that was um possibly like a licensing thing but i think they're releasing it here with as its original as it originally was so you've you've now got the distinct uh muscular you know 80s style action heroes as your as your main protagonists so that was a lot of fun and that used um a lot of the snezzes I don't want to say gimmicks but you, you know it had those it had the mode 7 and it had all the fancy fx stuff going on games like um games like contra and and castlevania 4 super castlevania and they utilized a lot of that and and castlevania 4 an absolute classic that's that's what i'm looking forward to playing again you've got super ghouls and ghosts super mario world super mario kart uh, Super Metroid, and there are a few surprises for me because I I don't ever recall playing Super Mario RPG. I I think that might have been um, America only, well Japan and America only. I'm not sure, 100 percent sure on that, but I'm not sure that was released over here. unless that was an N64 one that was released. Over here. That that might make sense because there are a couple of titles. I, I believe Earthbound as well. Did that was that Europe or was it US? Yeah, no, that's that's. I think the first time I got released over here was like when it was on the Virtual Console on the Wii or something, maybe. Okay. Because I, I think the ones that I don't remember, and that probably just says more about the kind of games I was playing when I was like 12 years old or whatever, but the, the ones I'm quite curious about are the RPGs. So you've got The Secret of Mana, and you've got Earthbound, and you've got Final Fantasy III, which I'm sure are all essential playthroughs. You've got Legend of Zelda. I, I owned that one, of course, A Link to the Past. Um, but yeah, titles like Super Punch-Out!, and and uh, and Yoshi's Island, I never played Super Mario World Two. So for me, it's as much as I'm also being introduced to a lot of new stuff as well. And and amongst those is Star Fox Two, which which is an interesting one because it it it's available by certain methods. You, you people have been able to play that game for years in some form or other, but they are releasing it officially for the first time. But only on this on this SNES Mini. I, I'm hoping that they change their minds on that and they decide to put that out on a digital store at a later time and let other people experience it. Because the, the weird thing about Star Fox 2 is that it's it's essentially a new game and they're only making it unavailable on, on a system that's already very limited. Yeah, that's the big one, isn't it, though? Do you not think that's that's the real big appeal of it? Yeah, absolutely. And but from the videos that I've seen, I'm I'm very curious to see how much extra work they've put into it, what they have built on it that hasn't been available in the ROMs. Because even watching some of the playthrough videos, I'm I, honestly I haven't been that taken with it. It just doesn't seem to leap out at me in the way that Star Fox still does. So by all accounts, those ROMs that were out since however many years ago. It's supposedly 90, 95% done. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, 
I'm cautiously optimistic about it. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's really nice that they're doing it. And it was even a surprise for the guys that worked on the release. They all went out celebrating when they found out it was finally seeing the light of day. But I'm, I'm going to be very cautious in approaching it. I don't want to fall into that something becoming overhyped and then being met with disappointment because I, I think it's really nice that they've managed to rescue this kind of lost title. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to quite reach the, the levels that Star Fox did. Well, we'll see. We'll see. And you can, you buy the, you buy the, so you buy the, the, the tanks for them, especially. And there's somewhere in the range of, oh, I think they're like 200 pounds, maybe a bit more. And, uh, and you can buy just freshwater jellyfish, but they only live up to a year. So it's like convincing the wife, well, like, I really want jellyfish. They're relaxing. And she'll be like, oh, yeah, but they only live for a year, don't they? And then they'll die and I'll be like really sad. And I don't know if you have emotional attachments to jellyfish. I'll tell you what would seal the deal. When your wife walks in the room and you're sitting there wearing your pet jellyfish as a hat. <laughs> um, is that is that a good thing or a bad thing? Are you selling that as a, a good? That's oh, almost I like. I can't tell. That's almost. See, that's almost like how not to look after a jellyfish isn't it no no you pick it out play with it stick it on your head put it back in boom done 